Hello everyone, welcome to lesson number 42. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to be talking more about the types of conditionals in uh, the English language. If you don't already know, there's actually five types of conditional sentences all in all, and we've already learned about the type zero conditional, the type one conditional, and the type two conditional in the lesson, in lesson number 36 and in lesson number 37. So, if you remember, the type zero conditional says that if this happens, then that happens. So for example, if you freeze water, you get ice, okay? The type one conditional says that if this happens, then this will happen. So if you freeze water, then it will turn to ice, okay? That's the type one conditional. The type two conditional says that if this happened, then this would happen too. For example, if I won the lottery, I would buy a new house. Okay, so very simple, very easy. Now today, we're going to be looking at the type three conditional, which basically states that if this would have happened, then this would have happened too. Okay, so, this conditional is pretty hypothetical, okay? You're thinking kind of more like abstract ideas. It's not a reality necessarily, but you know, you, you maybe are having a conversation with a friend and you're talking about uh, what if, okay? What if I, I had done this or something like that, okay? So the type three conditional is useful when you're referring to an impossible condition in the past and its probable result in the past. So basically, uh, you use this conditional, uh, this type of conditional when you wanna talk about the sorts of impossible things that happened in the past and they're impossible because we cannot change them just like we cannot change the past. We can't go back in time and change everything, okay? So, like many of you have noticed, the type zero conditional uses a simple present, and also the type one conditional uses a simple present too. The type uh, two conditional uses the simple past, and now, today, in this conditional that we're going to look at here, we're going to basically talk about uh, this one, which uses the perfect, the past perfect tense. Okay, so a little bit different. All right, we form the type three conditional by using if, and then we have the past perfect. Okay, and then later we have the perfect conditional with would in the beginning. So would is part of the perfect conditional. Um, I'll write it right here, but also just so you know, guys, you can also switch it. Remember, I think we talked about that in lesson number 37, where you can switch it around. So instead of putting if plus the past perfect here in the beginning, you can actually put it here at the end and you could put the perfect conditional in the front. Okay, so what is the perfect conditional? Well, first, why don't we talk about the past perfect, okay? So when you have the past perfect, okay, past perfect, it's kind of like when you, oops, when you have a uh, had done. So you know that had comes from the verb to have, right? So you start off with had, okay? And then you put the past uh, form of a verb, okay? So plus a verb in the past. So for example, let's talk about the verb to eat, okay? So what's the past of to eat? It would be eaten. Or to go, it would be gone. Or how about talk, okay? It would be talked. Okay, so talked. So that's the past perfect. Now let's look at the perfect conditional with would in the beginning. This one is also pretty simple. So the perfect conditional, okay. Perfect conditional. 
it's like you're going to take wood. So we'll start off with wood. Okay, and then we're going to have to use the verb to have. So just put have. We don't need the infinitive, okay? So we don't need to have. We just need have. That's it, okay? So would and then have, okay? And then we have to put the verb, okay? So kind of like up here, we're going to put one of the verbs. So take any verb that you want, right? So in the, an example up here, we have the verb to be, which in the past it's been. Okay, or you can um, use the one to go, right? Have gone, I would have gone. Or you can take the one, uh, a verb sort of like, you know, I walked, okay? I would have walked, okay? Or um, spoke, you know, like when you speak, would have spoken. Okay, I think this is going to be pretty easy once you see these examples, okay? So let's go ahead and jump right in. Number one, if they had done their homework, they would have passed the class. We're talking about something that happened in the past, okay? It's hypothetical. It didn't really actually happen. You're talking about a situation and you're talking about the result of what would have happened if something else occurred. So. If they had done their homework, if it occurred that they did actually do their homework, then they would have passed their class. They would have gotten A plus or a B or a C, but instead they did not pass their class, it sounds like. They probably got an F, okay? Number two, if I hadn't eaten beforehand, beforehand is like in the past, like prior to doing something else. If I hadn't eaten beforehand, I would have gone swimming. So, Basically, maybe you ate dinner and then you know how you have to wait maybe 40, 50, 60 minutes. Some people do that at least, okay? You wait a little bit of time before you go into the pool. Then I would have gone swimming, okay? Number three says, if it had snowed, would you have worn a coat? You can also use this with uh, questions, okay? If it had snowed, Hypothetically, if there was snow, maybe it was, it's winter, would you have worn a coat? Okay, I mean, I think the answer is going to be yes. Yeah, so you can probably say, if it had snowed, would you have worn a coat? Yeah, if it had snowed, I would have worn a coat. Yes, I would have, you could say. Number four, he would have ordered pizza if you hadn't cooked dinner. Okay, so somebody in this case had cooked dinner and maybe somebody else was thinking, ooh, I think I really want pizza tonight for dinner. But this person had already cooked dinner, so he's not going to order pizza anymore. He would have ordered pizza if he hadn't, if you hadn't cooked dinner, okay? And number five, I would have helped you if you hadn't been so disrespectful. Disrespectful is, um, bad manners, you know, you're a rude person, you're not kind, you don't say please and thank you, you are disrespectful in this case. I would have helped you if you hadn't been so disrespectful. So there's two people here. One person is not very nice and another person could have offered some help or guidance to them, but they decided, ah, I'm not going to. I don't like that person. He is not nice or she is not nice. I'm not going to do it. Number six, she would have watched the movie if the movie theater had stayed open. This one's good, uh, especially during these times because we're talking about coronavirus times, right? And everything is shut down. You know, the movie theaters are closed. Businesses are shut down. People don't have jobs. Things are closed. She would have watched the movie. So a new movie comes out in the movie theater, but the movie theater is closed. So if the movie theater had stayed open, she would have watched the movie. Remember guys, you can also switch it, remember? So we can also start it off with, if the movie theater had stayed open, she
she would have watched the movie. That's it, okay? So you choose which one you want. Number seven, would you have done that if you had been offered a million dollars? So this is a question. All right, so somebody's asking a hypothetical question here. And would you have done that if you had been offered a million dollars? Maybe this is something you would maybe see on that show Fear Factor, right? Where you eat insects or you eat something crazy um, or you do some weird sort of acrobatic thing that you would normally never do in your life, um, but you would maybe do it for a million dollars. So <laughs> this is a good question for that TV show. Would you have done that if you had been offered a million dollars? Okay, let's continue guys. Oh, by the way, with questions like that, you also would want to use the word would in your response. Okay, so would you have done that if you had been offered a million dollars? You can say, yes, I would have. Okay, yes, I would have done that if I had been offered a million dollars. Okay, or no, I wouldn't have done that if I had been offered a million dollars. Okay. Number eight, would they have been upset if you had called them ugly? So ugly is not a very nice word to be honest, but uh, it's the opposite of beautiful. So you have beautiful, right? And then you have ugly, right? So for example, you're asking a question also in this case, would they have been upset if you had called them ugly? So. Do you think that if you call somebody ugly, are they going to be upset? Probably, okay? So you're talking about something that hypothetically could have happened in the past. They probably would have been upset, right? So as a response, you could say, yes, I think they would have been upset if I had called them ugly, okay? Or no, they wouldn't have been upset if I called them ugly, they would laugh. Okay, they would have laughed, you can say, also. They would have laughed, right? Using also the perfect conditional, okay? Finally, we have number nine, and we're going to use wouldn't, okay? So wouldn't, wouldn't it had been easier if you had taken the time to practice more? Maybe you're not good at something like playing the guitar or playing the drums or playing the violin. Somebody's asking you, Hey, look, you're not doing so great right now. Wouldn't it have been easier if you had taken the time to practice more? Okay, and also with a question, we have to have a response, right? So we can say, yes, it would have been easier if I had taken the time to practice more. Or you could say, no, it wouldn't have been, or it wouldn't have been easier if I had taken the time to practice more. Okay, so you can choose. This one is very useful, guys. Um, I think, you know, at least it's a lot of fun when you're talking with friends and you're talk talking about hypothetical situations that would have happened in the past but never ended up happening. Okay, so you can have a lot of fun with it. As you can see, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. And it's also great because it's gonna help you discuss hypothetical situations in the past, all right? Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. This is gonna be it for this lesson. Make sure to keep on practicing every day. Don't give up, and I'll see you next time.